Welcome to the Houdini Hulai Challenge series. So, SideFX is holding a challenge where artists create a piece per day based on a daily topic every day for the month of July. I have decided to take on the challenge and also record and edit all of my work so that you get to see the process behind it. I'm doing this because I like a good challenge. So, let's get into it. So, today is day 17, Bones. Um, Bones... I was originally thinking like an elephant graveyard, I thought that could be very cool, but from the jump I wanted black and gold. I feel like black and gold is a really cool color scheme for bones and I don't know why. I, I, I don't know what videos I've watched or what's conditioned me to think that black and gold go together well for bones, but that's what's in my mind. So it was going to originally be an elephant graveyard and then I ended up starting this really late, so I've changed my idea, it's now going to be a snake basically just going to model the head um, and then procedurally generate the spine and then do a camera move through the spine. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so after I have finished with this, I can show you around. Unfortunately, I started recording late. Um, I was working on another computer and I wasn't rendering and then I came to this computer. Basically, I was just um, kind of all over the place with this one. So I think I recorded most of the rib stuff, um, which is actually the interesting part. That's this procedural rib system. So this one's pretty cool. It's reasonably accurate to how an actual snake skeleton looks. And so how it works is you begin with a line. So I had my skull over there and I just made a line. I figured what would be a good scale between head to body and this looked right. So yeah, I made this curve, bent it slightly that way, and then just with a bit of code developed the curve. So what I did was and I use this a lot. I use Curve U a ridiculous amount. Um, I use it with the Feather one as well. A super useful attribute on the resample node. It's called Curve U right over there. You just activate it and it gives you an attribute that runs from zero to one. Why that's useful is that you can taper. So you can see like this over here. I can control the shape of my snake with this curve. And it's awesome. So yeah, um, I use that as a taper so that the amplitude and the frequency fall off as we reach either end. So the spiral in the middle is just generated by sine and cosine on the y and z values based on the x distance. So as you move along x, the y and z components are affected by sine and cosine. So then I do some p-scale stuff. It's also based on this ramp. So as you can see, um, higher p-scale towards the start of the curve, lower p-scale towards the end. And what I use that for is that rib um, shape. So towards the end, it's very thin, but towards the front, it's thicker, but it's thickest in the middle. So on this side, I just have my rib set up. It is a circle that gets carved. So the carve tool is basically working with curve view as well. And it's just carving out an area of any curve. So I defined that piece, resampled it. Once again, curve view, this is so useful. I used it for tapering um, this rib. So you can see I have the shape taper and I use that as p-scale. And then you can multiply your poly wire by that p-scale and you end up with that, all right? So it's a really, really useful attribute to use. Um, I just make some edits to it, 
right? So I sharpen those two edges, subdivide, and then mirror it. Uh, leave some space in the middle for the spine. Transform it down a bit. I wanted the middle part of the two ribs to be at the origin. Uh, transform that down and then copy it to the curve. It's as easy as that. Like it's there's there's nothing particularly complicated about the curve and copying to it. You just use the copy to curves. Um, with a y-axis up vector, I believe. But anyways, you can see it tapers off to the end. This is because of the p-scale coming in from this side, from the curve. Then on the side, I resample this curve. And this is actually something that I picked up on the astronaut video. Um, I hadn't really done it before, but I realized it's kind of useful. It's this fitting of the point number where you use point number modulus some value. And then you fit it from 0 and 1 to a higher value and 1. Okay, um, so to explain modulus very quickly, um, I'm not a mathematician, so please don't flame me, I'm sensitive. You have a value, so let's say I have 7. You have 7 modulus 3, right? Um, the way I understand it is what you do is you go 7 over 3, and then modulus returns the remainder. So this is two remainder one, right? Two remainder one. Um, modulus returns that part there, the remainder one. So if you have six modulus two, there's no remainder, but six modulus four is remainder two. So why that's useful is that if you have a lot of points, so point number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, so if you have these points over here and you do something like mod three, the point number, PT num, PT num mod three, the remainder that you'll have is one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero. And what you can do with that is you can fit it to a new range so that instead of it going one, two, zero, it could do something like one, one, naught point six, one, one, naught point six, one, one, naught point six. And then you could use that as a thickness. So as you can see, these areas would be thicker. So um, I'm running out of space here. So using this for thickness would give you something like this, where it drops at the naught point six value. Right, so can you see how that would be useful? Because I can use that for the thickness of the snake's spine. So you do that and you turn it into a poly wire and that's exactly what I just showed you. You end up with this um, sort of jittered effect. And then I have that as the spine, but then I also do another copy to curves with these bits over here, just for a more interesting spine as well. So um, this is just a little chunk, a little bone that I make. This is just a vertebra, ver vertebrae? Vert breath, uh, but I copy that to curves and you end up with a spine and then you mix that with the original spine and the ribs you end up with that so super easy super quick procedural snake um, and then add a mouse node for some slight variation just so that the light hits it a bit differently in different areas and my camera is actually a mess I don't really want to be giving you bad um, advice on camera moves because it follows a curve and then it stops following a curve and it's it's a bit broken but I use um, constraints so if I go into this camera you can see the constraints over here it follows a path that I created it's basically the spine path but smoothed so you can see it over there all right so it's the path of the spine but it's smooth and then transformed a bit this way so the camera follows that you can see the camera moving along the curve it's a shelf tool you use constraints um, follow path and then you use the camera and you use the path and it follows the path. Um, but I do this weird thing where I make it stop following the path at a point and then I can animate it to go where it needs to go. And that's all done with constraint over here. So I keyframe the blend between following the path and my own position over here. And you end up with that. That's, I don't think it's a good workflow. Maybe you don't do that, but it worked here. So yeah, end result looks like this. So yeah, um, this one was kind of simple, kind of fun. Um, it was satisfying. It's really satisfying making these sort of procedural things like this um, snake skeleton. But yeah, thank you for watching once again. And 
I'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow's muscles. So uh, no idea what I'm doing for that one, but we'll see. So see you then. Bye.